I welcome Dr. David Oyedepo as he blesses us this morning. of this event find real reflection in everyone's life. Amen. My prayer today is that no one returns from this conference the same way he came. Amen. May every seed of life sown, all the anointed ministers who have been here, be our fruit in our lives. Amen. And may this session be a plus to all that God has been doing since we came. Amen. It shall grow in tempo till the end. Amen. This event shall grow in tempo till the end. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. I want to especially congratulate my son and his wife and the team of leaders here for a job well done. May the Lord continue to lift you as you keep lifting Jesus. Amen. We are not serving a church. We are not serving a man. We are serving Christ. For serving Christ, that is always returns. He said, we have left all and we have followed the worship we have. He didn't say, you are kind of get up. There's always something to expect when you are serving Jesus. May your expectation not be cut off. Amen. Jesus, breathe on your word this time Amen. and let your name be glorified. Amen. Thank you for what you are doing in this ministry. Thank you for the impact around the world. Take all the praise. Thank you for all the ministers who have represented here, those who have been here to minister to us, and those who are here with us this morning. Lord, let your fresh grace come upon each one. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be seated. God has ordained life for times and seasons. Understanding of the time is what gives each one his place in space. Let the river flow. What river? <laughs> we are told in scriptures, the Holy Ghost is a river. Let the river flow. Give room to the river to flow. Clear the path for the river to flow. One is the river of life. Is the spirit of quickness, the flesh has nothing to offer. The word has spoken to you, their spirit and their life. The spirit of God is the spirit of life. Allow life to flow. Allow light to flow. This morning I'll be looking at the principal content of this river. John 7, 37 to 39. Jesus speaking. It's explaining for you that I go, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. When I go, I will send him to you. Whosoever believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this prayer key of the Holy Ghost, we do not believe on him, should receive rivers of living water. 
everywhere that river flows, dead things come back to life. Revelation 22 and verse 3. There's a river flowing. And everywhere that river caught stone, there is life. Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. There is life. Life. Everything lives wherever that river flows. Everything lives wherever that river flows. We discover from scriptures. That river only flow where we allow him to. Proverbs 1, verse 20 to 23. He said, in the midst, now go back to Proverbs please, 1, 20 to 23. Proverbs 1, please, 20 to 23, if you are there. The Holy Spirit is essentially the spirit of wisdom. And let me come down to it. From Isaiah chapter 22, I mean Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, of counsel, of knowledge, of understanding, and of the fear of the Lord. There are seven components mentioned out there, the spirit of the Lord, the anointing. Everybody's used to the anointing. But now if you check, four others have to do directly with the subject of wisdom. <coughs> that means wisdom, counsel, knowledge, and understanding. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, that makes it five. And what you have remaining is the anointing and might. The anointing, the Spirit of the Lord, and might. So of the seven components that makes the Holy Spirit, five have to do, four have to directly with wisdom, one indirectly with wisdom. The custodian and preserver of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning and the preserver of wisdom. <coughs> so the Bible defines him as the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ephesians 1, 17 to 18. How much we ignore this principal content of the Holy Spirit. The word said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your gettings, get understanding. Exalt wisdom, she shall promote thee. She shall bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her. A crown of grace shall she deliver to you, and an ornament of grace. Proverbs 4, 7 to 8. Is the principal thing. And this principal thing is reserved for the end time. Ephesians 3, 8 to 11. Unto me who is less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I make known the mystery of the, kind, of, of, the, of the wisdom of God. To the intent now, to principles and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose of God, which he purpose in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's God's eternal purpose to unleash his manifest, manifest wisdom Manifold wisdom in this end time. Manifold wisdom here is defined by another translation as the many-sided 
wisdom of God in all its innumerable aspects and infinite varieties. Manifold wisdom covering all areas of life. Bringing the church to the limelight in the end time. And that's simple to understand because the word says Jesus will not return until church is ruling in the midst of our enemies. That's not mechanical. That's not political. That's a divine agenda. Sit down at my right hand till I make the enemies are fools too. Sit down at my right hand. You don't go anywhere. You can't return until you begin to rule in the midst of your enemies. And by wisdom kings reign and princes decree justice and yea, all the judges of the earth. Proverbs 8, 15 and 16. That is the thing for the hour. Thank God for the anointing. Praise God. I mean, uh, we need all of that. We need all the healings, all deliverances. We need all of that. But to fulfill God's end time agenda, his manifold wisdom must be given place we must create room for that principal content of the Holy Spirit. What a treasure. What a treasure. What a treasure. Made available for free for us in the kingdom. What a treasure. God shall be unleashing the spirit of wisdom upon the end time church like never before in history. It will humble the pride of the world. In the last days shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above the mountains, established about, and established about the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Come. Let's go to the matter of the house of the Lord that may teach us his way. The church will have what it takes to solve the problem of the world. They'll be flowing into the church, and the church is you and me. God's heavy wisdom will rest upon us in our various endeavors that they want to know how you're doing it. What's making this happen? Isaiah 2, verse 2 and 3. Micah chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and nations shall flow into it. Say, come, let's go to the mountain of the house of the Lord, that he may teach us his ways, we will walk in his path. The enthronement of the church is impossible without this principal thing. Let this river flow. That's where the key is. Daniel 7, 27, he said, And all the kingdoms under heaven shall be given to the sons of the Most High, and all kingdoms shall serve him. So we are on there. That's the end time agenda to enthrone the church by decking the church with manifold wisdom as contained in the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of wisdom. Christ was given the Holy Spirit without measure, and the Bible calls him the wisdom and the power of God. The wisdom and the power of God. John 3, 34, and then 1 Corinthians 1, 24. The wisdom. It was the embodiment of the wisdom of heaven. This is not common sense. This is not intellectual sense. This is heaven's sense. Whatever is from above is above all. This is heaven's sense. This is God's agenda for the hour. To give us our place in space. We need the wisdom of God. Now, can I tell you this? You saw Joseph. Wisdom located him in the prison. Never mind where you are. Daniel, a captive. Became the head of all astrologers, all wise men, all soothsayers, everybody put together. They could not find anyone as wise and discreet as Joseph in the whole of Egypt. Egypt was the reigning nation at that time. They couldn't find one. They located them. 
The proud and arrogant world will come looking for answers in the church. Yeah. Answers from believers. Yeah. Come tell us how you are doing it. Come show us how you are doing it. Come show us how you are doing it. Every carrier of this wisdom is enthroned. Every single carrier of this wisdom ends up enthroned. Ends up enthroned. They are not only enthroned, they are preserved on the throne. They are preserved on the throne. Let this river flow. 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 I'll show us a bit of it, its values and then go on to share with us how to assess and sustain it. Now, there is no one who is that wisdom ultimate. We are all learning. A wise man shall hear and increase in learning. We are all learning. But it's good to know the way to it. As wise as Solomon was, he prayed for it only once. He ended up very stupid. He demanded for it only once. Check the Bible. Every time you come to a crossroad, For the wisdom way out. Call for the wisdom way forward. Call for the wisdom way upward. Every time you come to a crossroad, if any man lacks wisdom at any point, let him ask. You have not because you ask not. Guess what hardly works. Guess what hardly works. Too many guess what workers. In the body, of, the body of Christ. Guess what hardly works. No one succeeds by accident. Guess what hardly works. If Solomon ever asked the Lord, I'm being pushed to marry wives, am I okay? He said, No, you are crazy. Now, he would have answered him. He never asked, he was just moving like Mumu. 700 wives to one man. And to talk with 300 concubines. How? That's outright demonism. No, that's, no, no that, that's it. Every prophecy failed on him. He was born a child of peace. God named him a son of peace. And he suddenly became a son of turbulence. And war. He asked only one. So we are, there is no ultimate place in the school of wisdom. It's a lifelong school. At every crossroad, Jesus, there must be a way out. When our last daughter was dying, and you can imagine the carry. A dying daughter from the prophet's chamber. That's the wound. I wasn't wounded. I knew there must always be a way out, no matter the, the onslaught. And I, I sat down on my chair and I said, Jesus, there must be a way out. On that 10 minutes, he showed me the way out. One, two, three. From his ward, fire. Child recovered. She just had her second child last week. <laughs> Amen. There is always a way out, but we don't ask. We just assume. I did a series of little booklets called Bible Science. Bible Science. Bible Science. Bi we are not talking about intellectual science. We're talking about Bible, Bible Science. Bible Science. Bible Science. What are the virtues of this wisdom? Uh, 
Ecclesiastes 7, 11. Wisdom is good for an inheritance. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. And there is profit to them that see the sun. It secures access to our inheritance. By doing what God says to do, you have committed him to confirm his word in your life. That's wisdom. Whatever it takes to do it, what belongs to will come your way. Wisdom is good, is accompanied with access to our inheritance. It makes living profitable. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. Two, it secures steadfastness in our work with God as we saw in Joseph and Daniel. They live to the fullness of their life. Fullness of their life. By keeping their work with God intact. And what was behind their life? Wisdom. Wisdom. Daniel was said to be relevant to the Babylonian government for 65 years. They were always looking for him. Joseph reigned for, 30, for 80 years. He began reigning at 30. He reigned till 110. It enhances our steadfastness in our work with God. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of their times. Isaiah 33 verse 6. And the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Isaiah 33 and verse 3. It stabilizes our work with God. It keeps you going. In season and out of season. That's Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Whosoever hear my sayings and do it them, I will like him unto one man who be out upon the rock. Then came the wind and the storm and beat against that house. And it fell not because it was founded upon the rock. The rock of working in obedience with God. Founded on the rock. You can't shake it. You can't move it. There are things that occur to you that you jitter. Others don't even know anything about People insult you and you are down, you are down, you are down for days. And the man has gone, so what do you do? <laughs> Even if you fight, he can't hear you. He said, you are a fool. All the people that had it when he said it, they are no longer there. He said, I'm sorry, you are no longer a fool, they have gone. They have carried that away, that you are a fool. Can I tell you my kind of approach? If you insult me to tomorrow in newspaper, it only has one day Lifespan. Nobody will buy tomorrow's newspaper today. <laughs> so it's gone. <laughs> now, if you do that on the magazine, it's one month maximum. <laughs> Amen. And more so, it made me to see it as your opinion to which you are allowed. Even God can't take your opinion from you. Even God can't take your opinion from you. There are people who are insulting God now, it doesn't exist. Nonsense. Where is God? There's no God. So can you imagine God now get angry and come down? <laughs> <laughs> I was in Israel some years ago and I saw books being traded, being marketed on the street. Jesus is not the Messiah. That's the title. On the streets of Israel. Kenneth Egan said, Kenneth Egan said, God told him, don't bother to give an answer to your critics. Don't bother. Don't bother. It will be on for, for life. On for life. Also, Jesus said, no attack, no defense. Keep going. You are getting somewhere. It helps you to be steadfast. 
stabilizes your, your work with God without losing your stamina. Number three, it engenders peace and pleasantness. All our ways are ways of pleasantness and all our paths are peace. Proverbs 3 and verse 17. All our paths are peace. Every one carrier of this virtue is ever at peace. Jesus will be asleep in the midst of the storm, ever at peace ever at peace. You can't get peace to buy in the market. No. And in this high time that we're living in, this wisdom engenders creativity. Proverbs 8.12 the Bible says, I wisdom dwell with prudence, and I find out the knowledge of witty inventions. Out of this world, order of inventions. Witty inventions that could turn a lab attendant to the science man of the year by name Michael Faraday. Lab attendant, that's all you knew. Heavy wisdom came upon him. He took over the laboratory of his master, Humphrey Davis, by right of capacity. Scientists here know the worth of Michael Faraday. Arthur Nutoroni, a rose mechanic, <laughs> invented the largest art moving equipment that was used in World War II. Supplied over 50% of it, heavyweight wisdom from heaven. His testimony said, You will see, they'll be showing him how to join the wires and all that stuff. We are back in that day of witty inventions. The kind of things the world has never known before is coming back to the church. Transgenerational record breakers, they are coming back to the church. So it's not somewhere home, it's in Christ. It's not in Harvard, not in Yale, not in Oxford, not in Cambridge, not in Covenant. It's in Christ. How unwise this man let us since he never learned? That's Jesus. John 7 5. You mean you can know what he didn't learn? Yes. He unveils it, he reveals it. For all the young people, in the sound of my voice today, the answer is in Christ. The Holy Ghost is the conveyor of the anointing for creativity. The river that causes witty inventions to occur, they are in him. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, and by understanding as he established the heavens. Proverbs 3 and verse 19. <laughs> by understanding as he has established the heavens. Psalm 104 and verse 24. How manifold are thy works, O God! In wisdom has thou made them all. The earth is also full of thy riches. Number five, riches and honor. Wisdom is the principal thing there, forget wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7, and 8. And with all thy getting, get understanding. He said, exhort her. She shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when you do embrace her. Now, riches and honor are with him. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Go to verse 8. Chapter 8, please. Verse 18. 
durable riches. Not to see today that it appears tomorrow. Durable riches. Durable riches. Every wealth you encounter by covenant stays. As long as the night and the day remains, it keeps working. I've never borrowed, I've never begged. I located this 42 years ago. I began working in it. And from where you are, not from where you are going to, start from where you are. Covenant work is from where you are. Someone says it's not working. He has not proved it. How will it work? Prove me now. Has not proved it? Has not proved it? We have never prayed for what to eat in my house. No once. No. I'm believing God. No, no, no. I believe God already. By obeying Him. Faith is not believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe Him. Faith is obeying God. Show me your faith without your obedience. I show my faith my obedience. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe Him. So as to commit Him to confirm His word in your life. Faith is obeying God. All this, I'm believing, I'm believing. You are not believing him. You are not doing what he says. No. He unveiled to me 43 years ago the mystery of his free marriage. I believed it who Klein and Sinker. I was thinking about what I was married. You were waking their nose. I believe what he say I will do to make it each free. And I won't have to wait for the other part to see his own. As I do my own, he will fall in line. I just knew that. And as long as I kept doing my part, he kept confirming his word. No prayer point to make the family work. There are too many other things to pray about. Faith is not just believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe him. The song of Abraham's faith was obedience. Get there to their country, he left. I consigned the, all the maybe in the house. He said, No, we didn't mention my name, but maybe I'm not even female. He began with himself. Take your son, your only son, I said, Oh, yeah, let's go. That was the faith of Abraham. And if you're Abraham's seed, we must do the works of Abraham. Obedience is what establishes our faith for results. Praise God. Praise God. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness, not crookedness. Durable riches and righteousness. Testifiable riches. Not carry drug around town. Testifiable riches. Not cutting short your partners in business. Clean riches. You have caused it true riches. If you're not a faithful and righteous man, my man shall come into your trust. The true riches. True riches. Other riches call them uncertain riches. Luke 16, verse 11. If you're not been faithful and righteous man, man, who shall come into your trust? The true riches. Then went on your that side, child them that are rich among you, not to be high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. The literal one is uncertain. It can dry up with the economy. But the one from there can't dry up. I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. Not economic trouble on the earth. Riches in glory. Riches in glory. Riches in glory. The true riches. True riches is secured in heaven. And by covenant. Too many things going around town. Be personal in your work with God, sir. Be personal in your work with God. Be personal in your work with God. Be personal in your work with God. He said, don't be slothful, but follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Don't be slothful. Don't assume. Assumption is the mother of frustration. Don't assume. True riches. It's with Christ. He said, thou shalt remember the Lord your God is he that gave you power to get wealth. That may establish to you his covenant. Not your idea. His covenant. His covenant. 
Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. And this wisdom imbues supernatural confidence. 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 Remember, wisdom will make the face of a wise man to shine, and the boldness of his countenance shall be changed. Ecclesiastes 8.1. In Proverbs 3, 26, Proverbs 3 and verse 26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence. He's been talking about wisdom from verse 13. And he shall keep thy foot from being taken. You carry divine confidence, not in self. He said, we are the confidence that worship God in spirit, which was in Christ Jesus. We, and we have no confidence in the flesh. Confidence in God. Immovable confidence. All is that confidence. I once stated, whatever God cannot do in my life, let it remain undone. Whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. Wherever God cannot take me to, may I never get there. Full stop, final bus stop, I'm going nowhere. Full stop, final bus stop, I'm going nowhere. It imbues supernatural confidence. Therefore, let this river flow. Let this river flow. It carries inestimable values for us. Let this river flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. There is more hope, the Bible says, for a child than for an old foolish king who will no more be admonished. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 13. Everybody. No one spoke to Solomon once. There is no prophet, no teacher, no counselor. He crashed under his own weight. There is more hope for a child, a, a poor and wise child, than an old foolish king who will no longer be admonished. You may not have the opportunity of sitting down with people. Most of them have even gone to heaven. They are all in heaven, all the ones in the Bible. Sit down and find out what is it that they knew that we need to know. What is it that they did that we need to do? One of the things that helped my life most was coming to ministry. I got sold out to reading biographies of ministers across centuries. I devoted my entire life to them. There were things I learned from Billy Graham that just dictated the step I should take along certain lines. And across the board, John Wesley, all of them, they look old and ancient, but they walked in some path that gave them triumph. Stand in the way and see and ask for the old path. Where's the good way when your father's truck and walk in it? You find rest for your souls. He said, We will not walk there. Right? Okay, you see trouble. There is always something in the past that helps to define the present. There's always something in the past that helps to define the present. It's my prayer that this will flow like never before. You have it, make demand for it. It is not weakness to ask for help when you need one. It is wisdom. It's no weakness to ask, weakness to ask for help. Why is there trauma in my family? Call for help. From someone who may not have trouble. Who knows how to keep trouble away? Ask. Only those who ask questions are entitled to answers. So Jesus said, I mean, the word says, call upon me, I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Number six, it secures our entombment. Wisdom secures our entombment. We have sp spent time on that. Thank you, Jesus. 
Finally, he secures length of days. No one here will die young. Yeah. Wisdom is the greatest medication for longevity. Being sensitive to your state and not overdriving yourself is one of the things that wisdom offers. If men should overdrive them, all the flock will die one day. Wisdom tells you, avoid overdrive. Overdriving on the steering kills. Overdriving your body kills. Avoid overdriving. By that scripture from Genesis 30, if men should overdrive them, all the sheep will die one day. He's saying, hey, listen, don't overdrive yourself. It's Bible sense for longevity. Don't overdrive yourself. Don't overdrive yourself. I will not I'll be stupid to keep going at the rate I was going when I was 40. No. That would be dev devastating. That would be. Now I have a house now that has an office in there, so I can walk into that office without driving. Wisdom secures length of days. Wisdom secures length of days. Look at those virtues. You can't find them anywhere else. In the name of Jesus, I decree sustainable flow of the river of the spirit of wisdom in our lives. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, how to keep the river of the spirit of wisdom flowing? Number one, make demand for the spirit of wisdom at every crossroad. Make demand for it. That was the lifestyle of David. A man said to be as smart as an angel of God. He always made demand for the way out when confronted. They had a strategic failure when they went to war and left the place unguarded. The enemies came and carried away their wives, their sons, their daughters. People thought of stoning him. David encouraged himself in the Lord and went to the Lord. Shall I pursue them? Shall I pursue them? Shall I overtake them? Shall I recover the things they have carried? And God answered, Pursue, for that shall surely overtake and without doubt recover all. For Samuel 30, 6 to 9, and 17 to 18, he recovered all. He made demand for direction. You know, one key virtue of wisdom is direction. The labor of the Philippines will every one of them because he knows not how to go to the city. A wise man scaled the city of the mighty and cast down the strength of the confidence they are all. Wisdom is better than strength. It's a weapon of war. So it's important for us to make demand for wisdom at every crossroad in our life. Whosoever lacks wisdom, whosoever does not know the way out, let him ask me. I will give him wisdom liberally without calling him a fool. He knows we will need help. So it's made help available to us, but we have to demand for the help to assess it. You have not because you ask not. He that asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, find it. To him that knocketh, the door shall be opened. Before I left this morning, I was speaking to one of our officials, and I said, Jesus, show the wisdom way out to the next level. The wisdom way forward without wrong steps. The wisdom way upward without crashing. Everybody needs this. Everybody needs it. Those who don't feel they need it, they lose the little they have and they get granted. 
Do you know the Bible says a man is like a paper in the hand of a worldish woman. So Solomon's wisdom became like paper. There was no more content. No says, no naps, no free running. That was the man that the whole world came to hear his wisdom. So we need to be right on key in making demands. No one here will fall. No one will crash. In the name of Jesus. No one will fall. He was confronted by the Philistines and inquired of the Lord. Shall I go up? Will you deliver them to my hand? That was David's weakness and strength. They call it weakness, but it was his strength. He will always ask the way to victory, ask the way to triumph, ask the way to conquer. Second Samuel 5, 18 to 20, and 25 to 26. Hear this. And I like us to read it. Isaiah 41, verse 17 to 20. Isaiah 41. When the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Jacob, will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in high places and floods and springs. In the wilderness, a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar. I will change their story. They seeking for the flow of the river of wisdom. I will give them to change their story. When the poor and the needy seek water, and they, are, they can't find any, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Jacob, will not forsake them. I will open to them rivers and high places and fountains in the desert. There must be a call. Anything about the Holy Ghost demands a call. How much more shall the Holy Ghost, how much more shall we have? Shall he give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Luke 11, 13. We ask, we make demand. Some speak in tongues until the tongues dry up. The tongues dry, they know the tongue is not going anywhere. They have not demanded for freshness. So you can't have it. Ask of the Lord rain in the time of the later rain. The Lord will make break clouds and give showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1. Ask, 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 ask. This river is so refreshing. This river makes life fulfilling, ask. This river makes life impactful, ask. Ask. To keep the river flowing, we must never be tired of asking so as not to get grounded in life. Number two. Maintain the fear of God to keep the flow. Maintain the fear of God to keep the flow. Hmm. The examples of those who kept the flow, simple. Joseph, but I fear God. That's his testimony. But I fear God. But I fear God. Genesis 42 verse 18. But I fear God. Daniel, they could not find anything amiss in him. Daniel 6 and verse 4. For he was a faithful man. He was a faithful man. He was a faithful man. They could not have occasion of fault for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault in him. Maintain the fear of God to keep the flow. Maintain the fear of God to keep the flow. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy keeps on expanding our understanding. Psalm 111 and verse 10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the only way to, one vital way, sorry, to keep the flow. The river of wisdom. Very important.
They asked Joseph, can you help us out? He said, no, it's not in me. But God himself will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. They are not the things we carry. I've seen myself being called up for one thing or another. And I knew nothing about it in terms of how to handle it. Jesus, I'm depending on you. Holy Spirit, have your way. And I got amazed sitting down and dealing with so, so amazed with such authority, with such serenity, and with result by asking. On that time, they brought a case to me and I didn't pray. I didn't get a result. Why? The fight continued. Just to ask. Just to ask. Just to ask. We are so limited as humans. We are unlimited. Whatever is from above is above all. Let's call for the virtue from above to deal with the issues here. It will be so simple, so, so cheap. The fear of the Lord is vital to keep the flow. Number three, keep feeding on the world. Every gift of the Spirit thrives on the Word. The Word is the food of the Spirit. Wisdom will cease when you stop feeding it. Wisdom will cease. If you check the story of Solomon, I gave myself to seek and to search. I set my heart to find. Other than I don't know that sound. There was no reference anywhere to anything. No. No. Any gift of God will win and go off without being fed on the word. The word is the food of the spirit. It's the thing on which the spirit of God thrives. Without the word we fumble. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 9. The Bible says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Paul the Great. He said, 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy 4.13. 2 Timothy 4.13. The cloak that I left at trust with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with me, and the books, and especially my notes. My notes. And Peter testified, according to the wisdom given to our brother Paul, we feed the wisdom of God in us on the world. On the world. On the world. On the world. So, what lazy people can sustain the flow? What lazy people can sustain the flow? Now, watch. The flow has to do with the Holy Spirit comparing scripture with scriptures to produce a product. Which thing we teach, not as man's wisdom teaches, but as the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing scriptures with scriptures. That is the root cause of the flow of wisdom. You are deep in scriptures, and he brings them to your remembrance and connects them to deal with an issue. Can I hear your amen? Time to get back to the world. It's time to get back to the world. It's time to get back to the world as a learner, not as a teacher. Get back to the world as a learner. Have a note to take note of the lessons of the day. I'm in that school. I have written today what I learned down this morning. I will write tomorrow. Even when I go to church, I say, Lord, I need my takeaway from this service. And I'm the one teaching. Teach me the way forward. We need to be committed learners, not casual readers. 
No open the book of Mark chapter 4. You know, I, I read that 10 years ago. And so what? Oh, the depth, both of the wisdom of God, wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his ways and his paths are past finding out. Romans 11, 33. Please get awake. It's impossible to sustain the flow of the spirit of wisdom without feeding on the world as a lifestyle. Feeding on the world as a lifestyle with your notes in place. Maybe a number of us have seen online or wherever the volumes I was doing on treasures, treasures of life. They are my notes from my diaries. <laughs> we now have volume four. We are going on volume five. They are just excavating those things from my diaries. There are not things that I read in a book. There are things that, I mean, the things I learned from books and from the Bible that are lessons to me. In case it will bless others, I say, pack them up. It's not enough to read. It's a study to show yourself from to God as a man that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Rightly dividing it. It takes us having, it can remind you what he has not taught you, so let him teach you. When you need it, he will remind you. Can I hear your amen? Give the Lord a big hand. I hope I'm not disturbing anybody here. Okay. Can I have you say with me, nothing of value is free. So if this wisdom is that valuable, then it must carry a cost. 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 We have several different cars, and they carry different costs of maintenance. Different costs of maintenance. Because they are different in value. They are different in value. So the cost of maintenance differs. It differs. It differs. Keep feeding on the world and then maintain company with the wise. Maintain company with the wise. Like I said to myself, I'm not interested about those who explain the promises, but those who obtain the promises. I can learn from those who obtain the promises by what they did to obtain the promise. Those who explain, I can't get anything from them. Amen. Because you have not shown me what happened as a result of your revelation. Revelation without proofs is entertainment. It's not entertainment. Keep company with the wise. Somebody disregards the word, you better separate yourself, otherwise you will soon disbelieve in the things you believe. Otherwise, faith will lose value to you. Otherwise, the wisdom of God will lose value to you. You start celebrating all this terrestrial thing at the expense of that from above, which has no comparison on the earth. Whatever is from above is above all, any day, any time. So choose to walk with the wise. He that was wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Choose to walk with the wise as way of life. I had one time out many years ago, all night prayer, crossing from 82, December 23. Lord, separate me from everyone going backward. Connect me with all, only those who are going forward. Make my eyes blind to things that do not edify, and my ears deaf to things that do not build up. I did, I went on that prayer based on Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. That walketh not in the way of the ungodly, not stand in the way of sinners, but whose delight is in the law of his God upon the judgment day and night. Whatsoever I do, it shall prosper. So, what to do has a lot to do with the company you keep. You keep a wrong company, what to do won't show. It will show. You'll just be going off, 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 and gone. Brand new day for us. Brand new day for us. Amen. Brand new day for us. Amen. And brand new day for us. Amen. And brand new day for us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, my prayer is this. We will let this flow. Let this river flow. 
let this overflow. As I conclude, we have established some two, three things here. Wisdom is the principal content of the Holy Spirit. It's four out of his seven content, and the fifth is indirect. It gives access and secures the flow, which is the fear of God. So what are we saying? Five out of seven, remaining only the anointing and might, which is required for exploit. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. But listen to me. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong. So might also comes from the word. I said might comes from the word. Might comes... So I'm, I'm not using my strength. Sir. No. My strength can carry the things I do. But those who do know their God, they shall be strong. He said in that Daniel 11, 32, those who do wickedly against the covenant, it will corrupt with flatteries. But those who do know their God, those who embrace the covenant of scriptures, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. God's word strengthens. Now, what are we saying? Six out of seven is wisdom. Praise God. Six out of seven is wisdom. And then the anointing is sustained by the word. Fire will go off without wood. The word is the wood that keeps the fire burning. So without the word, anointing will go off. It will go off only a matter of time. It will go off. So come back to it. Everything that makes things work has to do with the wisdom of God at work. Be blessed. That river won't run dry in your life. Amen. It won't run dry in your family. Amen. It won't run dry in your ministry. Amen. It won't run dry in your business. Amen. The flow will be feasible. Amen. The evidence will be real. Amen. It will be undeniable forever. Amen. In this ministry, it shall be so. Amen. In your life, it shall be so. Amen. In your family, it shall be so. Amen. In your family, it shall be so. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Now ask God for the flow of wisdom. Ask him this morning. Ask him this morning, everybody. Ask him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. There's a particular area of our life where you need this flow right now. You need this flow right now. You have gone around that mountain long enough. There's a way forward. There's a way forward. There's a way forward. Through wisdom is a house built, but understanding is established. There's a way forward. To greater peace, greater harmony in our business, in our families, in our ministries, in our personal lives. Reach out right now, reach out right now, reach out right now. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Lift up your two hands, everyone. I decree sustainable flow of the river of the spirit of wisdom in our lives. Receive this today in the name of Jesus. No one ever gets stranded with this wisdom. You never suffer stagnation again. 
this wisdom always paves the way forward. You never know a setback anymore in your life. Whatever this wisdom delivers, it sustains, it preserves. Nothing good will fall off from your hand again. No heavenly offer in your life will disappear. Now, in your walk with God, there shall be no more looking back. 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 Because all our ways are ways of pleasantness and all our paths are peace. From today, begin to enjoy peace and serenity. Peace and serenity. In all areas of your lives. Be blessed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.